In recent years, the idea of serious space colonization is becoming more and more popular. Whether it be dreams of cities on Mars, or mining colonies in the asteroid belt, or interstellar voyages, our ambitions in space seem to grow every year, but to many, they still seem within the realm of science fiction. However, the colonization of space is a lot closer than many people think. A perfect starting point lies just 240,000 miles away, far closer than the 140 million mile distance of Mars, the moon. The moon is by no means a habitable place. Covered with dangerous dust, blasted with radiation, and with no air to speak of, it is the harshest environment humans have ever had to deal with so far. It is, however, a survivable one for both robots and humans with the proper equipment. While the moon is difficult, the rewards it can bring for our species are enormous and well worth the risk. The moon is a completely untapped world filled with resources and potential, and it is ours for the taking. And the moon does have resources, and a lot of them. The moon has rare and valuable metals, just like Earth. The moon also does have oxygen in abundance, but you do need to mine it from the rocks. It's a similar situation for water, although most of it is confined to the North and South Poles. The moon does have a significant advantage over Earth, and that's launch benefits. The moon's gravity is far lower than Earth's, meaning rockets are far easier and cheaper to launch from the moon than from Earth. This means that every satellite you can launch from Earth, the moon can launch six or more, and can do it for far less money. This also means we can build far larger spaceships on the moon. Imagine Starship, or SLS, but six times bigger. These colossal ships are necessary to bring supplies to Mars for further colonization missions. I'd go as far to say as without a moon colony, Mars colonization does not happen. This also opens up the opportunity for exporting material to Earth itself. The moon is as dead as the world can get. There's no oceans to dump trash in, no atmosphere to flood with greenhouse gases, no life to push to the brink of extinction. Large-scale mining on the moon poses no risk to wildlife, since there isn't any. And with the aforementioned launch benefits, exporting pristine lunar metals to Earth could become economically viable in the near future. This means we could end our dependence on Earth-based mining, at least partially, and greatly reduce the stress on our environment. And because of the previously mentioned launch benefits, it is actually easier to launch something from the moon to low Earth orbit than it is to launch from Earth, despite the moon being hundreds of times further away than low Earth orbit. As well as mining and manufacturing, power generation is also possible on the moon. The moon has vast deposits of helium-3, which is a fuel that could be used in nuclear fusion reactors for power generation. While fusion is still not advanced enough to be used as a power source, it might be in the future, and helium-3 is there. However, helium-3 is not sustainable for the long term. It's the moon's equivalent of a fossil fuel reserve. There's a lot of it, but it's limited, and we will eventually run out. But that will be after decades, if not centuries, of use, and helium-3 mining could jumpstart the lunar economy faster than mining or manufacturing, and give cheap and clean fuel for people back on Earth, eliminating our dependence on fossil fuels and further helping solve climate change. It's becoming clear to us that the moon has the capability of becoming an industrial powerhouse making large quantities of electronics, power, and exporting incredible amounts of raw materials to Earth. Like the Industrial Revolution of Earth, the Moon could very well have an economic boom, bringing enormous benefits to people on Earth. But the immense lunar industrial capacity isn't the only way to make money on the Moon. There's also the option for tourism. Unlike Mars or Venus, the Moon is close by, and travel times are measured in days, not months or years. Tourism might seem like a niche industry, but it counts for just around 10% of the global GDP, or just under 8 trillion US dollars. That's enough money to run entire nations, and with the titanic ships the moon could produce, lunar tourism could become economically possible and even affordable. We don't have to use many hundreds of ships either. There's a ship concept called an Aldrin Cycler that could use the gravitational pulls of Earth and the moon to make loops, coming down to low Earth orbit to pick up passengers and dropping them off at the moon with very low fuel costs. We could deploy dozens of Aldrin cyclers, each capable of hosting thousands of people, to make Earth-to-Moon travel far cheaper than it is today. There are, however, some significant problems that we will need to overcome to have a serious shot at lunar colonization. Low gravity is terrible for the human body, and can not only affect the health of people on the moon, but might also pose a serious risk to raising a family, as babies will probably be especially unhealthy. Radiation exposure is also a problem so moon settlements will likely have to be underground. We can't just hope these problems solve themselves, we must fix them if we want to colonize the moon. But I do believe these are solvable problems, and breakthroughs in medicine could allow children to be born on the moon with little problems.
All of these concepts might sound very far into the future, but they really aren't. All it takes is one government agency or company to take it seriously. What might start as a small Artemis base camp from NASA could grow into a small mining colony, which would require more people to maintain, which would require more infrastructure to support those people, which would require more people, and a positive feedback loop that eventually sees Artemis space grow into a fully self-sufficient country, like what's seen in my Colonization of the Moon series, link in the description. With an initial investment of a few billion dollars, a large lunar colony could return hundreds of billions in revenue to the parent country. It would change economics as we know it, and whatever country gets there first would have a monopoly on space itself and see unimaginable wealth and growth. Just one simple lunar colony will propel humanity into this future and pave the way for the colonization of Mars, Venus, and the asteroid belt, and they are possible in our lifetime. I don't see a world in just a few decades from now where we don't have a significant presence on the moon. But we have to do it. We can't sit idly and just hope governments do it for us. We have to take this possible future of an Earth free from the burdens of mining and climate change and an interplanetary humanity centered around the moon, the industrial capital of the solar system, and take it. It starts with us, and we can all make a difference. Thank you for watching.